All right. Hello. We are live. All right. All right, crew. Welcome back. The getting back to work on this little pumpkin or jack-o'-lantern I'm making. Uh, picking up right where I left off. I'm just gonna, let's see, this one we got done. I'm gonna go through and repeat the process where I inflate each piece and kind of knock the edges down here. Let's see, like that's two. I'm just going to go back to my trim dynamic, knock that down. Let's see, I'll smooth it first. I like the smooth, those really sharp edges down. That way I, um, I, I just noticed the trim dynamic and ZBrush like it better. When you kind of knock those sharp edges down before you flatten them. That and these points. Be remesh. Flatten these points down. Now I'll hit it with the trim dynamic. Probably a little bigger than that. There we go. I'm basically just trying to get rid of those like really sharp angles. This part you're never gonna see, so I'm not really worried about it. It's gonna be the inside. But I just wanna get rid of those points because they can give you some, uh, some weird artifacts. Didn't do this side. Kind of go through real quick and hit all the sides. I'll just jump, jump through and do each one like that real quick. Knock this down. Move it. Same thing here. Knock the edge down with the smooth brush. This way, the creases on my jack o' lantern will have a nice exaggerated look. Sometimes it's hard to get that to, to work with you. Here we go. You gotta really force it sometimes. That's the nice thing about ZBrush though, it's with the Z Remesh, you can really uh, work fast and loose when you need to. Try to get through this part as quickly as I can. It's not necessarily a uh, uh, beauty piece, so it doesn't need to be super nice. In fact, I think it'll work out well if it, there's a little bit of randomness to it. I'll go through and do this to each part real quick. 
smooth, smooth edge. And I, I kind of take a, uh, almost like an assembly line approach when I have multiple pieces that are the same, or not the same, but similar. I go through and repeat the same process. And uh, that way, I notice for me anyway, I keep a keep things more consistent that way. There's no like extreme differences between the pieces because sometimes I would find for for me like if I would completely try to finish this piece out. Or this part of the uh, the pumpkin chunk, and then move on to another one. I might do something a little differently, but this way it's kind of like I I maintain a, a better consistency, and that's uh, it's more of a personal preference, I guess. Depends what your workflow is like. Using the trim dynamic again, flatten it out. Try to keep a little bit of randomness going. Let's see, we got, I we got three more to go. Really like to get to the eyes today. Okay. Hit it with the Dynamesh, smooth it out, Dynamesh. Nice and fast. Fast and loose. There we go. Because these parts will be under the, uh, the stem, I guess. All right now, I just kind of. Knock those sides down. I'm gonna be a lot more aggressive with this piece. It's got a kind of a bigger crease or seam, if you will, that I need to work with. Better bring it all the way to this angle here. And that'll help eliminate some of that uh, uniformity that I had before. It, it was pretty uniform, and I want it to be a little bit more randomized. That'll work. Over to this guy. Same thing, rinse and repeat. Knock those edges down. Whoops. Actually, I forgot. Smooth them down first. Sides. I mean, you don't have to do this, it just kind of helps with a. Uh, the Dynamesh. Knock it down.
get this side a little bit more aggressive angles. We got one more. Move it out. Out. Nice and quick and loose. Your mesh. Move out this tip here. Move it. Knock it down. Your mesh. There we go. Let me get rid of that ultra pointiness that it has. There we go. Knock the corner down. There we go. I'm going to inflate a little bit. Eat that. You just have to like, probably just better to use your mouse. Do 15. I'm not gonna inflate all of them the same. Do a little bit of randomness. Oh. All right, that should be good for the inflate. And I'll just dynamesh real quick. Dynamesh, dynamesh, mesh, dynamesh, 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 and dynamesh. I've got all my chunks. Now I'll just use the move brush. I'm going to use the move topological. Just kind of bring these into where I need them to be. And the nice thing is, is I'll have a, there will be a, I'll put a little like knot on the bottom of this just to kind of hide all this. down let's smooth that been a little rough Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Yay, nothing like a ZBrush crash. I 
it's so weird the the times it chooses to crash it's like i wasn't really doing anything that demanding Like, what's this? Kind of move them into place. Want to look like they're all kind of being sucked into the middle there. Let me switch back to my other, uh, like this one. bump this section out in Save. In case it decides to crash on me again. Okay, let me look at my little reference sheet here. Not sure how I want to approach doing the eyes. I think, let me go to my sub tools. Go to the top. I'm going to merge down. Let me make sure this, though, is at the top. Hide that. I'm going to merge all these together now. Let me make, actually, let me edit the top first. Let me. Oh, hold on.
There we go, that should work. Let me just pull this one in a little bit more. That'll be fine. All right, now let me go to the top one. And then now I'll merge down. And one more. Now we have the pumpkin. The auto groups. There we go. To make sure everything's cool. All right, I like this so far. I'm going to save it. Actually, let me just duplicate this. All this back up. I don't know if this is going to work. Let's see. How do I want to do the, the cut? I think I'll use the mask pen. And let me uh, turn symmetry on. Actually, let me make sure I'm yeah, I'm facing the right direction. See, the eyes are kind of triangly. I think I'll use the Can I not use Sculptress Pro with this? See what it does when I pick. I guess it doesn't work with a mask brush. Well, I'll just turn it off. No, that's they're more like this. They're more in the center here. They're kind of like a rounded. Triangle. Smaller, a little more control over it. Nice, whoops.
not quite big enough. Need to go pretty low. Kind of fill this in. Damn it. Oh. Okay. I'm not entirely sure if this is going to work how I think it is. What I want to do is I want to mask this out and use the extract mesh feature. I want to try to cut out, use the extract as a a boolean mesh the masking sharpen there we go smaller Sharpen one more time. Let me shrink it. Sharpen. There we go. I think that'll be okay. And we go to geometry. Geology. Where is that photo? Extract, there we go. Give it a, just a little closer so we can see. I think that'll work. That. Let me go back to this one. I'm going to clear that mask. Make this a start group. Turn live boolean on. That worked pretty well. I think. I think I'm cool with that. Let me try to do this though first. Unmask that. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna dynamish this. No blur. Oh, that was fast. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to take that quickly. I'm going to try to clean this up. Turn symmetry off.
clean it up here a bit. It didn't smooth the front of it, did it? No. Let me turn uh, back face masking on while I smooth. This way it'll still follow the creases or the, the splits in the gourd. At least I think it will. But it won't be so uh, harsh looking. Let me, uh... Maybe just the trim dynamic. Knock it down a little. Make sure it's not affecting the other side. Whenever you have these little tips, if you use the inflate brush and then Dynamesh again, you can flatten them out. It should help get them out of there. And just kind of repeat that until you get rid of them. It doesn't want to go away. There we go. Damn it. Sometimes it takes a little more effort than others. This one here just does not want to cooperate. One more time. I think we got it this time. Oh, yeah. We've got it. Now I just want to do the same thing to these this edge. I don't want it to be so uh, sharp. Oh, let me save since we're having one of those crashing days. Smooth out these edges.
I want to make sure I don't hit hit parts of it that I don't want to smooth. Smooth it out, smooth it out. Keep smoothing those edges. This, I'm hoping this gives me a nice looking bullion cut. It should. Almost there. That one out. the eyes real quick and for good measure I'll do a quick dynamish on it just to make sure that it gets a nice smooth edge. Dynamesh kind of smooths everything out a little bit. All right. This shows us what my end result is. I think that looks pretty good. Although I think now that I've dynameshed it, I want to I want to kind of angle it in so it looks like it is cutting in a little bit better. Up a bit. Let's see, I'll do it on the eyes so you can see what I mean here. Maybe bring that up a bit. I'm going to knock this down so that it has like a, a bevel to it. As opposed to like that, like pretty, it's almost like a 90 degree angle. I'll show you what I mean here. Let me do this one eye and we'll see what it looks like. I think it'll look a lot, lot nicer. Man, I hate those little nipple things. <laughs> Super annoying. Inflate. Dynamesh. All right. I think we're in the clear now. Now I really got to work this part down. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, it's like this is you're carving it with certain tools here. I should probably just knock all this down some more. I don't have to deal with that. Those spiky parts.
All right, and let's see how that affects us. Yeah, it has a nicer... Um, nicer, like, silhouette to it. I mean, I guess I could just knock this edge down. I should probably do that. Uh, Not sure what's better. Let's see, I can go back. I think I do like it better than when it was just... I, th I think I will leave it like that and then I'll just knock this edge down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one more duplicate of this. And I'm going to scale it. Oh. No, they brush. Why? One of them days, I guess, huh? So weird. Uh. All right, see how we're doing. Okay, I got the extract. Go back to this net cap. File. Save. Maybe if I just turn that off for now. Turn that one on. A little bit smaller. Okay. That. that one or maybe I can jump that one up I'll go to this one uh, let me go to Transparent. I think I need to bring it forward a little bit. Off. Oh, hello. That's what's going on. Okay. Now let me go to. That's the inside one. Nope. This one. So let's see. Need to come forward a little bit. Still got a little bit here. But I just have to make it a tad bigger. There we go. And I'll have to just. Oh no, that's just cutting away at that part. I'll have to clean up these edges. But I think that'll work. Is 
fact, I'm going to make it smaller again. And just bring it forward. I can just eliminate all that after the fact. Or what I can do is, I think I can just stretch it. What does that do? Stretch it, shrink it, stretch it this way. I kind of want to bring this inside part out. Let's try a deformer. All right. I just want to bring this part. I want to spread it. Actually, let me uh, mask those and this. You know what? I obviously need more this way. That's what I need. I want want these I think I need one more there we go all these now maybe I'll grab these two Why isn't that one moving? Whatever. There we go. That's good. Go ahead and accept that. That's pretty good for the first layer. I do have to do a little bit of cleanup right here, but that's no big deal. Looks like I have to bring it up and out here. Let's do another deformer. Good. I think I need a couple more this way. And I want just these and these. Maybe this one for now. I just want to bring those up, I think. Yeah, I need more this way. Need these, these. Not really doing much, huh? Oh, why isn't it? Um, Oops. there we go. That's what I need.
No. Oh, you know what? I need to do it to the the one that's in front of that one. I need to pull these out. That's looking pretty good. Pretty happy with that so far. I like the uh, the boolean thing is definitely working. Just kind of trying to use uh, some different tools so I can get used to uh, used to some of the other tools and make use of them better. Kind of hopefully speed up my workflow with certain things. So using the booleans and deformers, I'm gonna try to do a lot of that for this uh, little project. Let's do a quick, let me uh, pop that guy there. Quick little render of this guy. Render. And I'm going to port uh, and save, definitely save. I'll just save this as, I'll save it as five. I'd rather have too many saves than not enough. All right, I'm gonna call it a stream there. Made a little bit of progress. And I have a good idea of how I'm gonna do the carving. I'm gonna use the Boolean workflow and then I'm gonna go through and clean it up after. But I think it's gonna look pretty neat because I want it to have like, uh, similar to like this here. These ridges, I kind of want to mimic that a little bit. I like the way that looks, it looks really goofy. But yeah, that's gonna be it for this stream. I'll be back on Friday, chipping away at this a little bit more. Uh, for those of you who've been following along, thanks, I appreciate it. For those of you who just joined, welcome. Uh, I do stream about uh, three to four days a week. So if you're interested in catching the stream, uh, like, subscribe. Uh, that way you'll get notified uh, notified as soon as I go live. For those of you who tuned in, thanks. And as always, if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comment section below and I'll try to get to them as soon as possible. All right, everybody. Have a good day.